Hey beautiful friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to share with you my minimalistic approach uh, to documentary filmmaking, especially the production process. Back in the days when I started filmmaking, uh, when I started producing, I used to go out with a lot of equipment sometimes three cameras or one camera with multiple lenses. I wanted to cover the action from all these different angles and uh, we'll have sets of lights and tripods and it just the, we'll have this enormous amount of equipment. So when we went on production, it was taking us way long time to set up. And yes, sometimes you need it depending on uh, the circumstances that you're shooting. But now I started to have a different approach. Um, as I got more minimalistic in my personal life, I would try and stick with one camera and one lens instead of carrying one camera and these multiple lenses. And not only that, but I wasn't really sure of my style, what my style is of filmmaking and uh, documentary filmmaking. And therefore, when I would see something or some shot that somebody did, I would want to recreate that and then get that lens and then somebody else did this different shot and I'll put that in the mix and it was just all over the place. So now that I got more clear on what look, what style I really want and that came with years and years of uh, shooting and hundreds of documentaries and short segments and so on so that it, it it comes with time but now that i'm more clear i realize that one lens one camera should do i used for many years a 24 to 70 and i just got a 24 to 105 uh, lens sony both of them sony and why i went to 24 to 100 is because I do a lot of cultural documentaries and sometimes the artists that I covered, let's say woodcarver or somebody repairing rugs, I want to go really tight and see all those little details and that lens would give me that. I can do the interviews staying between the range of 35 to 50 millimeter and then do the b-roll with whatever it is that I need. If I need a wider shot, or quickly go to a tighter shot so that way I don't have to switch lenses because sometimes when I go I have two hours or three hours not more than that to finish the interview and the b-roll so I have to be really uh, precise to what I want and I cannot be wasting time in switching lenses the other thing that I use is a tripod although I love shooting with a monopod I find that um, the shots, especially when somebody is doing something, let's say the wood carver, I like to have that movement with the monopod that I um, can get instead of having it handheld, uh, because my handheld is not that steady, although this camera has really great image stabilizer. However, I find it that I have more smooth movement when I have a monopod or sometimes I want to go in and out. For example, I just finished shooting a documentary uh, on um, an artist who implements a lot of sexual elements in her work. So I wanted to have that movement uh, imitating a sexual act in a way when she was sitting and I wanted to go in and out and the monopod gave me really that movement that I liked. Gimbal shots are amazing. I love it. I used it a lot and I like it for B-roll, especially if somebody's walking and you want to get that B-roll. However, not on every shoot I can do that or it doesn't really fit on every uh, documentary that I do. I recently finished another documentary profile on an artist that makes candles. She was super short on time. She gave me very little time to do that. So I did not have that luxury to go out and have a gimbal and have this walking shot. So I shot everything on the monopod. As far as sound, I use Sennheiser and uh, it, it's a lavalier. So why I use lavalier? A wireless lavalier and not as opposed to wired lavalier which sometimes I would use 
uh, depending. But I, I like the wireless lavalier just because the subject can walk and talk, and especially for the documentaries that the artist would walk me through her art or she wants to show me something or I want those shots that where she walks and she has a conversation with some employee that she has. This is finished now? Not yet, because yeah. I'm trying to go up to here, you see? Yeah. I like those shots and I get those with a wireless lavalier, so I decided to just carry that uh, because I can do the interview with that, I can do the walking shots with that, and it's a very versatile, as opposed to the wired lavalier uh, that sometimes I've done this where they would walk, but then you see the cable or the tripping and it's just not convenient. Uh, but the wireless lavalier would do the job. So now what I do is the wireless lavalier, I would plug it directly to the camera. That way I have my headphones and I will monitor during the interview, I mean, throughout the whole process, uh, the audio. And that's, as a side note, you have to monitor the audio at all times because sometimes you get static noise from the lavalier, uh, wireless lavalier or uh, the the subject would brush or her hair would brush to the uh, lavalier something would happen but you always uh, as a precaution you always have to monitor even at the bureau shots and i like to monitor during the bureau shots because i want to get this moments that i call them quiet moments which are not that quiet but they don't have uh interview over them and when i edit my videos i like to have those in between the topics that the subject is talking about i like those moments that she or he would do something and we hear that ambient noise and the sound of the hammer or the sound of something that she's making <laughs> those natural noises I really love them so I like to monitor them and that gives me idea oh maybe I need to point the microphone like closer I need to uh, record that separately that way I know what I'm getting and what I'm not getting and when I'm done recording the interview and the b-roll and everything I'll ask her okay can you do this again and then I'll record it with a wireless lavalier I'll take it off from her or him and then I'll point it and I'll record just that sound and again at all times monitor it the other thing is the lights so I used to carry a set of three lights I have these led lights they're not that heavy but when you add the batteries and the stands it's just, I cannot carry all that by myself. And what I like to do is with one suitcase, just go on a shoot and not have to worry about setting all these lights. But if there's no window or you're going for a certain look that you want uh, the subject to have, by all means, carry lights. However, most of the shoots that I do now, I do not carry lights and I do it on a daylight with whatever lighting is available i really like that natural look and how the light spills on the face sometimes not evenly just like in real life and it gives this different texture and look that i really like again depending where you're shooting under what conditions but most of the times you can absolutely do on a with a natural light and just know your camera and how to set it up and you'll be fine. I'll leave you with that. And I really hope that you try to minimize your filmmaking style. And if you are not shooting just because you are afraid or if you're thinking that you need all this equipment, uh, please, you do not need all this equipment to go out and shoot documentaries. Just go out, one camera, one lens, one tripod or monopod and uh, see what you can do after that, see what you don't like and experiment next time and change things a little bit around. It's it's not a sprint, it's a marathon and we learn as we go. And I really hope that you do that and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.